I noticed that that Cam Brasker thing had some similarities to uh, San Francisco, at least with the marginal plates. But they all have marginal plates to some degree or another, so do starfish. Um, the Cam Brasker thing actually has full fledged and lacra. <laughs> See, what you're seeing here is these are clearly something akin to floor plates. And these five elements here are, are plates that I've newly recognized common to Edrio asteroids. I have no doubt this is an Edrio asteroid. The problem is the details along these edges are too fuzzy to actually understand. <clears throat> um, the flip side of this shows that primitive condition with a fully plated bottom surface. Now, in a cyclocystoid, the marginal plates are actually exposed on the bottom. These, that bottom surface is completely covered by that pegma. See that? And where it's collapsed in, you can still see the rays sort of where the plates are bowed out. And that's where the mouth would be. I mean, I, you know, I, I know what you're saying. Very so, much different. But I, just, I, I know what you're saying, but my eye, I don't see a cyclocystoid at all. Oh, no, it no, looks no, nothing yeah, like it. Just the marginal plates on that first uh, illustration struck me so Oh, yeah, yeah. So but but also, but back also back they, don't, they don't look like cyclocystoid marginals either. Cyclocystoid marginals are very, very different. They have these funny little pits here. They have pores that penetrate them. There's a lot of differences. Echinoderms in general, when they're flat, make a marginal ring. Even ones that are flattened this way rather than this way will make a marginal ring. Things like stylophorins and these sorts of things are flattened like that. Yeah? Uh, these specimens are all the, the rubber the rubber fossils. Yeah. Uh, they're all preserved in shale. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I, I wasn't sure. If everybody understood the definition by the It's a, basically the fossil itself is in a hard shell. Okay? The fossil is completely dissolved away and it has there's a hole in a rock. And then you simply pour latex into the hole in the rock, let it dry, and then you peel it out. Um, the specimens from China, when you peel it out, you can see the microstructure in the plates, and that microstructure is on the order of something like 20 micrometers. And it's still preserved there. It's just incredible stuff. Um, this stuff, this, this is from Spain, and it's preserved in the same way. And I mean, you can see the detail is incredible on these things. See, that's why we, we think our materials are so beautifully preserved. But we, we've got the, the skeleton. Yeah. But again, the skeleton, I, I really hate to say this, but the skeleton in this case is a detriment. <laughs> you can't actually, if, if, if you have the fossil, you can't tell anything about it. If you can selectively dissolve the calcite. Oh, what, I, what I've done, what I'm doing, I, I don't like to admit this, but what I'm doing is I'm actually sawing them in half. <laughs> you don't saw nice ones in half, my hand. You find the ones that are identifiable, and you saw them very carefully and selectively. But you can see a lot of these details if you make perfectly oriented sections and so on. But yeah. The one we had that was kind of destroyed, was that just an act of somebody taking the rock hammer and breaking it over? That's just a fragment that's been sitting in the museum for years. Bell actually illustrated that fragment. And I picked it up and went, whoa, that's exactly what I'm seeing in this stuff from Morocco. Yeah. Well, uh, a lot of this discussion about. Um, up and down in these. Uh, uh, makes me wonder, although I agree with you, probably we should think of starfish as being inverted. Well, they're inverted at all. I'd say, what about the common ancestor could have been the other way around? But, uh, that was already the Nambulacra down and the other way. What's, what's the argument? Um, the argument is people have always started with a sessile organism. And if it's a sessile organism, it's hard to understand how it would be upside down like that because if you're not moving around, then you're fouled automatically. 
right, but, but that presupposes what's that song. But I wanted to ask you along those lines, uh, how does campus strolling, you know, this odd thing from the Kinzer Jail in Pennsylvania, how does that fit into all this new story? I, I've looked at that several times. I don't think it's all that remarkable. It's really not well preserved. It looks to me like a stromatic society type thing, but I, again, it's one of the things I plan on really looking at in the near future. Um, yeah, as you know, I mean, it was originally described as a, as a, as a jellyfish, I think. Yeah. But, you know, Chris, Chris Paul and Smith made a big deal of this being pretty close to the ancestral yeah. uh, lineage uh, coming into uh, all that stuff. Right. And yet, in some ways, it's very easy to But again, you know, the worse the specimen is, the more arm waving you can do, I think, is also right. true. It's, it's not that well preserved. Right. But we don't know enough about the glory points of that. Again, again, once you get really deep there, the, the thing from, see, see, Cambraster has the problem. It's so primitive that when you look at the bottom, you see the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas things just a little bit more derived, like this thing from China, aren't plated on the bottom. So when you see the bottom, you see the inside. So this, this thing is problematic because you can't actually see anything. Even though it's beautifully preserved, you, you've got the liability of having the bottom. And I, I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> this old latex and half. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would work. <laughs> yeah. The easier to see is made to be pretty clean specimens on top. Is it reasonable to assume the two feet could extend out of that root far enough to say pick three off the whole surface to keep them free. Most feeding tube feet tend to be on the short side. That said, if you look at a sea urchin, you know, if a sea urchin has a test this big, the tube feet can stick out that far. So they could be probably extend some way. The problem is there's no evidence of tube feet other than this podial basins that we don't know anything about until just now. <coughs> so, based on that, you can't really say much. Now, what would be nice is there's certain places like uh, the Hunschertschiefer in, in, in Germany, there's actually Hebrews, the starfish are preserved with pyrotized tube feet. But again, I'm not sure how you would tell that. Um, I know Bertrand was there looking for tube feet and stylophorans to try to demonstrate some stuff, and I don't know how, how successful he was. No idea. But they are very clean, yeah. But again, most animals have ways to keep themselves clean. Um, but I don't know what those might be for sure. <laughs>